Welcome back, Nauta fans. We're starting up the finals now, finally. We, well, the initial finals. I mean, it's grand finals between Daniel Kalina and Gode. Pepe Amper didn't show up for the final match, for the losers' finals, so Daniel Kalina got bumped up to grand finals against Gode. That was going to be a best of three. On initially, we're going to be on. I'm not sure the exact name of the map. It's an asteroid. What is the map name? AstroTurf, that's what it is. I apologize. I'm not that familiar with the really large maps in spring games, so it's kind of new for me, honestly. Also, apparently this isn't... Is this not handle... Well, I'm not getting this. Okay. Sorry, that's some transparency issues with the map. I think it's an engine issue. Weird. Well, anyway in the game, so both players just choosing their start locations. Like I said, kind of... It's a pretty map. Definitely give it that. Very large, though. There is a smaller asteroid map like this, too, that I've played in 1v1, but... Sorry. Called Apophis. This reminds me of that. Except without actually being that game. Or being that map. And, like I said, this... I don't know what's going on with this black thing here. I think there's something weird with this version of the engine and the transparent water effect that's meant to make this whole space thing work. Right now we're just waiting for Daniel Kalina to... Oh! Okay, apparently Daniel Kalina did not properly join up, so we'll have to start this up again. Because apparently they're still trying to figure out how to set up the starting boxes. Yeah. Why not just have it set already and then have a default? I mean, 0k Lobby does that just fine. Just set it up, have a default, and then just buy the map. And like, You start the map and it gives you a start box set. That's it. Now we're just waiting on the players to get up again. Uh, I don't know. It's a little bit disappointing in terms of the actual turnout. I mean, it's not been terrible, I suppose. It's a pretty big tournament, but still. The... been kind of weird. Stuff's been kind of breaking. We had... I mean, the first match I cast ended off with the game stopping because one of the players had to leave for a phone call, and it's just... I don't know. It's kind of disappointing that, and then the f losers' finals. Pepe had, Pepe and Pedro ended up vanishing. Like, hopefully, the grand finals will at least be quite interesting to make up for that. But now we're waiting on Goda to come back into the game. I don't know where he went. Like, I have no idea where he went. Okay, anyway, I guess I'll just go back to intermission and then come back when the game starts again. Oh, no, never mind. Go just come back. Okay, we're good. No, maybe not. <sighs> Screw it. I'll just... Or maybe... <sighs> okay, go to synced up. Start the game. Okay, now the game is starting up again. I'm just getting it going. Not sure what happened last time. Why? Oh, yeah, right. The start box is too small for the players. I don't know. But anyway, now we are going to get going for real this time. Okay, now let's go to needs to get in here. Where is he? Why is he not in yet? Nice while waiting on him, we can look at the pretty map. It's pretty. And big. Giant asteroid. Okay, Goda is setting himself up. So pretty. See, so one of my intermission screenshots is Apophis, which is, like I said, the small version of this map. Because it looks so pretty. In space. Space is so pretty. 
Well, it can be if you see all the nebulae and such, like, you can here. Which, actually, I'm pretty sure you normally can't without doing some image processing to make all the X-ray and gamma ray and similar high frequency and possibly low frequency microwave and radio wave information show up in visible color. But hey, it looks cool. Okay, now the game is starting up. And go to Cyan in the south in the northwest side. The Neil is red in the east side of the map, and both players are setting themselves up. This is the game one of the finals for the Nauta tournament. And this should be interesting. We people expected it to be Pepe Ampere versus Gota, but Pepe Ampere ended up vanishing at the last minute, so now Daniil. Daniil Kalina ends up fighting Gota to figure out who is the best Nada player. Gota, of course, is the favorite to win this. I mean, anyone who's watching this probably is aware that Gota is by far the favorite to win this, but we'll see what Daniil has up his sleeve. Maybe he has got something. Maybe there's something he knows. Maybe there's something he can think of, and that will actually win him the game, but I don't know. It's tough. It's really tough to say. It's a tough call. He might have something. He might not. But what I do know is that most of the people watching here, I'm sure all of you expect Gota to win. And I'm sure that Daniil expects Gota to win. We noticed that Pau earlier apparently freaked out and panicked and didn't really play properly when he's fighting against Gota. So it really will come down to whether or not Daniil is actually able to keep his head about him. Because if he's able to just keep his head on his shoulders, he should be okay. I mean... Yeah, Goda is a really strong player, but the thing is, is that ultimately he's playing the same game as you are. And when you're playing someone who's really strong, they are playing the same game as you are. So if they're doing something that's really powerful, you could theoretically do it too. There's nothing stopping you from doing the thing they're doing. Usually, though, the powerful thing is knowing when to do the things they're doing more than anything else. Now, Goda is getting KBot Lab. Both players getting KBot Lab on this map. Not surprising, even though it's such a massive map. It's not surprising just because. We've seen before that K-Bots are just generally the thing to go for. That's what you start with. A bunch of hammers being built up. Not a whole lot of Peewees for scouting. A little bit surprised there, but anyway. An AK is being built up. Goda is going for a bit of scouting. He wants to go to the north. Double checking there's nothing there. This crater looks like it's pretty valuable too with a nice elevation here, a nice hill. Same with south. Both south and north craters. Holding these hills will be very important. I think both players are well aware of this. And it looks like Daniil is very quickly sending some hammers to the north to try to capture for himself. Well, hammers and Peewees to the north. And more metal extractors being built around his tower, and I think he's probably... Yeah, he's basically at the limit for his tower for metal extractors. But from here... Let's see, Goda, what does he have? I think Goda's actually got a slightly worse position for metal extractors. Very slightly, but it'll come down to whether or not he, who builds constructors first. And Goda looks like the one who is going to do that. He has one constructor out already. No constructors out yet for Daniil. That will likely be a big mistake. On this map, there's so much space, there's so much metal that getting a couple constructors out and expanding along both to the north and to the south is going to be very important to win this game. And Goda is doing that right away. So Goda is going to have a massive metal advantage. Right now he's already 14 to 11. Not spending as much metal, mind you, but he does have a lot of metal. Whereas Daniil is spending a lot of metal and doesn't really have enough. He is where we're going to be able to take, at least militarily take the north. No constructors yet for either player. I think... Okay, there we go. There is the Fark. An odd name. Anyway, there is the Constructor for Daniil. He's going to build that. It's going to get to it eventually. And these AKs have no chance against Daniil's units right here. But then Gota's not worried about that so much. Gota's really playing for the mid to late game. He wants to make sure that he has enough resources so that he's going to last. And he already has twice the economy right now. Getting a radar up as well. And right now, Gota has... He has vision on the middle of the map. He doesn't have vision of this north crater or the south crater. And at the same time, Daniil, he has line of sight, and that alone. He does not know anything else. He only knows what he can directly see. And I'm beginning to expect that... Okay, I think that this light purple is history of sight. And the, and the darker purple is the... Or the more saturated purple is the current sight radius. I was suspecting that the entire time, and now I believe it actually is the case. That's actually really useful information, too, knowing exactly where someone has scouted. Assuming that is what it tells me and it's not something else. I think it might just be some sort of... It might also be some sort of two-tiered vision system. Oh, yeah, it's some sort of two-tiered vision system. It's not a history of scouting. That sucks. Anyway, 
Pee Wee versus AK is probably going to go in Pee Wee's favor, but we'll see. Actually, the AK just moving away, getting out of there. Both players are, well, Goda is going to scout nicely. Daniil has not really scouted yet. He had this Pee Wee going out to scout, but it stopped. So Daniil has no idea what Goda's up to. And Goda's going to have a very good idea what Daniil is up to. And the fact that Daniil, while he does have some constructors, he, I believe he was sending them all to the north. Let's see. On our, oops, this is the one I want. Oh, he's sending them sort of to the center and then probably to the north. No, he has nothing queued up. Interesting. He is, however, attacking across this hill and attacking from inside the crater as well with some hammers. He's going to be... Well, this is going to work. It's going to be hammers... Well, thuds versus hammers. I'm... Well, it's pretty even. Actually, thuds versus peewees and hammers. The peewees are not going to have an easy time with this. Depending on how they can go, how they take advantage of the gradients of the hill for speed. But these guys here are trying to just avoid the range advantage altogether. Let's go along the north side of the crater instead. While Goda just double checking the south. He's sending his units out of the south just to make sure there's nothing there. And he's harassing the north quite nicely. And once again, I forgot to turn on not a sound. He's harassing the north quite nicely. And that is going to be two metal extractors that Daniil could not really afford to lose. So right now, Goda has twice the metal income right now. He is... Doing a really good job. He's actually starting to excess a bit. See, so is Daniil, actually. He's, Daniil's not spending that much money, surprisingly enough. I guess... Okay, so the K-Bot Lab apparently either just spends 8 metal all the time, or spends metal based on the unit it's building. Not 100% sure exactly how this works, how build power works in this game, to be honest. Looks like it is pretty constant per factory, though. And an aircraft plant for good! And nothing really can be afforded by Daniil. So Daniil going to be going up. He's going to try to harass from the looks of it along the north side. That's what he's going to try to do. As Goda's breaking into the center, Daniil's going to try to harass along the north side. Goda, however, is fellow is probably where we'll, let's see how aware of this is he. He is aware of this. He knows this is coming. He has radar up here. He does have a couple AKs to deal with this once he figures it out. I mean, he knows that it, there's a peewee there. The hammers he doesn't quite know about, but he's going to find out about soon enough. But it looks like Goda's, Goda's harassment force has been pushed away, and the metal extractors have been rebuilt. An air plant is coming up as well for Daniil, but Daniil... Okay, he's recovered his economy somewhat. He's at 20 to 30. 20 metal income to 30 metal income. Goda is at 30 metal income, which isn't what Daniil wants to see, but Daniil's going to try to fix that. Getting rid of a few metal extractors, and... Not sure that... I don't think it's going to work out too well. The thuds are really getting in the way. One metal extractor is down, so Goda is... Well... It's not really going to work out for him. The thing is, is that he had to have to kill all the metal extractors and then run away... Otherwise, Reclaim will end up working in Goda's favor. And I think, at this point, Daniil, his forces have nowhere to go. They're going to try to fall off the asteroid completely. Because they have nowhere to go. Whatsoever. More support coming in from the crater, but it's not going to be enough. These hammers are doing what they can. And they're actually not doing a terrible job. But even with that, it's just hard for them to hit there. Like, bear in mind, this is a hill going downwards. I mean, ignoring the whole asteroid thing. This is a downwards-facing hill. So... Hammers are being at a range disadvantage while thuds are at a range advantage this entire time. Like, this retreat micro is not working out because this is a disadvantageous position to retreat into. This is just a downhill slope. Now, at the same time, it looks like Goda is trying to harass again inside of Daniil's base. Should be successful, that too. And I should probably point it out, Goda is playing core and Daniil is playing arm, so... In case anyone cared, that is the case, but... That was probably obvious at that point because I was talking about thuds and hammers and should be obvious by then. Vash was coming in and getting rid of this harassment force that Daniil's been sending along the south. While sending... Okay, now this is, a, this is a successful harassment. This is what he wants to see. Getting some peewees over here, getting rid of one of the metal extractors. And another metal extractor is going to go down... No, it's not. This laser turret is getting in the way. Peewees are tanking the shots. Actually, just peewees here, so... There needs to be a lot of peewees to tank all these shots to get rid of the laser turret. Laser turret not taking a lot of damage... Again, repaired very well, and despite that, another metal extractor does go down. But most of the metal extractors are pretty well defended by the solar plants here. And the rest of the Peewee's trying to scout out. Still, Daniil knows what's going on now. That's the important thing. He is aware of what exactly is going on inside of Goda's base. I'll probably go from his point of view. He is aware of the stuff going on inside of Goda's base. He knows where the factory is. He knows where there's the geothermal plant. And Goda, on the other hand, knows this stuff as well, and is actually dealing quite a bit of damage to this factory. I think he's going to destroy it, too. Oh, yeah, that factory is going down. And Daniil... 
Daniil is not doing especially well here for energy either. Goda, on the other hand, is fine. This is Goda's economy. 20 metal income right now. Daniil actually is at 20 metal as well, so the harassment paid off. I mean, Daniil managed to even the economy out somewhat, but he lost his air factory. He had a couple, a couple freedom fighters. That was about it for air. You can get rid of the Vash without too much issue, but you can't really do much else. Let's see, I think the Vash... I'm not sure the Vash have anti-air. Well, it doesn't matter. This one is going down. The other one is... Well, it doesn't matter. An Avenger coming in to try to deal with the Freedom Fighters. It should be in the favor of the Freedom Fighters, and it definitely is. The two Freedom Fighters get out of there alive, and another aircraft plant being built to, to work for them. Bearing in mind, aircraft in Nauta have fuel. And they actually have fuel that they burn up as they're flying. So it's important to bear that in mind, because they can't just fly around forever. They are eventually going to have to land. Does this work? Okay, anyway. Gode from the north is gonna probably take this. I think this is it. I think this attack is gonna do it, because Gode has so much... Such a military advantage. His economy advantage is no more, but his military advantage was already in place. And he can easily rebuild the economy, and he certainly is doing exactly that. Necro's down to the south, building, rebuilding metal extractors. Not going to be a big deal. And this bot army to the north here, it's going to go down, it's going to... It's rather going to go south, and it's going to tear apart... I mean, right now, there's actually not even a good lineup for Daniil's forces. Daniil's forces are lined up such that Gode can just attack directly and hit the edge of that line, and that'll work. But he's not... Not quite. He is staying on the hill. He just wants to contain at this point. He doesn't want to completely attack. He is starting to move in, though. Because the thing is, like I said, there is a bit of a height advantage coming from the center outwards. Just the way the map is laid out, there's a height advantage when you're coming from the center. There's some other ridges and hills, but going down the crater, massive height advantage. Going off to the side of this whole place, massive height advantage to the person who is further to the center. Or closer to the center, rather. <clears throat> now, Gode doesn't quite have the range to deal with these metal stars quite yet. Now he does, and he's probably going to do going to do that, exactly that right now. Well, I would expect he would. There we go, now he's going for it. Getting rid of a metal extractor or two. Or all of them, probably. I mean, he's been doing a lot of harassment on Daniil's base this entire time. And even then, Daniil's actually managed to build up enough of an economy. Both players have an even economy. Daniil, here as we can see, he has much less energy, but it's the same amount of metal. The only thing is, though, air control is firmly God's. I mean, Daniil trying to do what he can, he's getting... Pretty good shots in with his Freedom Fighters, but it's not going great. It's going okay, though. The thing is, the advancement into Vasps that God has done hasn't really paid off. Actually, this like, it looks like I was exactly wrong. Nope. I was wrong. It looks like Daniil has actually taken air control. Although, there are still a couple of and or Vasps and a couple Avengers being built up, but... Mainly because God has two air plants. That's the thing. God has two air plants. Daniil has one. Daniil has one, Gode here has two. So Daniil is going to be... Well, building more K-Bot, though. He's, okay, Daniil has two K-Bot plants. Gode has two aircraft plants. We'll see what wins out. So Gode's going to be a bit weaker on the ground, but much, 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 much stronger in the air, especially once he actually gets air dominance as a result of just having more units. But Daniil does have the ground advantage, and he is pushing these thuds back with Peewees. So Gode doesn't quite have the game yet. Daniil, however, still 20 metal to 30... Metal or so for Gode. <laughs> yeah, Lego Man pointing out in the chat. It's a good thing planes work in the vacuum of space. Yeah, it certainly is. Quite the atmosphere for an asteroid of this size. Gotta say. That is impressive. But anyway, Gode being pushed back a bit. These Peewees are taking a lot of damage, though, and the range advantage is Gode's by far. I mean, these studs are taking full advantage of the range. The Peewees trying to run uphill. Doing a great job dealing with this side of the army, but the other side of the army here to the west, not so much. And it looks like just Freedom Fighters. Apparently, Daniil is just more concerned about keeping air control rather than trying to take advantage of it and actually deal with the stuff on the ground using it. As I, we said, he does have two K-Bot factories. He is definitely focused on using K-Bots to beat everything rather than using planes. But even then, the planes are going to become a big deal pretty soon. And even in the K-Bots, they aren't in the best position. There's mostly Peewees. Actually, what is being built? Peewees and Peewees. All Peewees. Daniil going for mass Peewee. I don't know how well this is going to work. I kind of doubt it's going to work that well. Against that many thuds. 
It can only sort of work because of the dodging ability, but I don't think it's going to matter. And there's going to be so many units, it's not going to make a difference. And two Gabot factories for Goda, by the way. Goda does have... He has 35 metal right now. Daniil has 21. And Daniil's 21 metal is not doing him any favors. He is building some more, although this... Fark needs to be building more metal extractors. Really, this is where queuing comes in. Queuing is very important. Because, as mentioned before, multitasking, but I realized, of course, in spring games, you can queue a lot of things. When you build a factory, you can queue everything that factory is going to be building when it's under construction. When you have a worker going out, you can queue everything while it's under construction. You can also queue everything while it's going. Just queue a massive build order. And whatever you're planning on doing. I mean, yeah, that plan might get interfered with, but just deal with it when it's interfered with. Don't deal with it. Don't forget about it and just leave it idle for a while. Anyway, air battle going, looks like it is going into Daniil's favor, no, God's favor, God is taking this, he does have enough Avengers to deal with this, like I said, all this production. At this point, Daniil should be aware of the air factories being built, I'm pretty sure he's flown over at least once. So he should know exactly what's being built up, and that he doesn't have much of a chance when it comes to air control right now. He is getting some hellfire, or hellfish of his own, which, interesting choice, he doesn't want to get rid of the ground forces, that's true, but at the same time, that's what his K-Bots are for. That's how he's been playing this out so far, his K-Bots are for that. And his Peewees are doing okay, at least against small numbers of thuds. It's really a matter of large numbers. This is the thing, is that you really gotta make sure that you don't have these small numbers, because the thuds work great in numbers, and they work great against numbers, because of the fact that they're not super accurate, but they have a lot of damage. And their damage is kinda spread out a bit, but they have a huge range. So the Peewees really can't get in. However, hammers have been built up. Not as many hammers as there are thuds, but there are still hammers to try to deal with this. Once again, though, range advantage is going to go to Goda. Because Goda's coming from the center. He's coming from the high ground. That's very important. And what's going on here? We do have just, okay, Freedom Fighters from one and... Oh, sorry, Avengers from one and Avengers and Vash from the other. So Goda is taking map control and not much else can be said about that. Hellfish are up and more are being constructed, but I mean... What is he going to do with them? They're not going to last more than maybe one run, and against these forces, really, he's not got a great way of getting into that crater. And Goda has taken the crater, by the way. He's also taken the south crater. Now, admittedly, this is something that he shouldn't be able to get away with. Daniil should be able to take this out, and he is, he is going to do so. I hope he's not watching the stream, but he is going to be taking this out. Very quickly, he's going to take this out, so that, that expansion attempt from Goda is not going to be successful. But the northern expansion attempt certainly is. And Daniil has not bothered to expand there himself either. He is expanding along the center here. He's making sure he is taking some metal extractors. But even then, that's he has 21 metal income. Goda has 30. It's kind of been stuck at this for a while. But the thing is, it's paying off now. I mean, it's been several minutes. But now Goda is finally taking full advantage of this. He's, he should be able to win from here. I know I said that before. And yeah, it was pushed away. But I, think, I actually do think from here it's going to work out. The Vashps are going to probably come in for air support as well. Where are they? It's an Avenger. That's a Vash. Where are all the Vash? Oh, it's only one. Okay, never mind. Not the best situation, but still. The Avengers are able to get rid of pretty much all the air forces. I mean, there's not much left here. These Hellfish are going to try to do what they can, but I think that's the one Hellfish left. And as soon as the Avengers get near it, they're going to kill it. Or possibly just the ha possibly the Thuds will kill it either. I mean, either way, it's dead. And... Yeah, there it starts to go. Well, it starts to get attacked. And Daniil looks like he's trying to flank out. He, this flank might work too, but once again, it really just comes down to economy. God has had the better economy this entire game. Daniil right now has 9.7 metal. Okay, he is half the metal he had before. He's a third of the metal that God has. He's lost everything to harassment from the south. He's lost. He's losing everything in his army from harassment to the north. This is... Oh yeah, and radars also point out. Both players have decent knowledge. Gode is definitely more knowledgeable. He knows exactly what's going on inside of Daniil's base. Daniil doesn't really know what's going on inside of Gode's base. That's basically it. Yeah, both south and north. There is that K-Bot lab. That is going down. 2% health, 1% health, and down! Another K-Bot lab down. So that graveyard of factories. Aircraft factory and a K-Bot factory. Both of them have gone down. But from the north side as well, another K-Bot factory goes down, and the aircraft factory about to die. I think Daniil's just going to GG at this point, because he has got no chance. His command center is going to try to defend, of course, but there's way too many thuds here. And the Hellfish just 
or not Hellfish, the Avengers to take care of everything else. The Vash, I should say. That's my when I said Hellfish was Vash. They help for support. And the Thuds just tear apart everything. And there we go. Daniil is thrown in the towel. That is game. Not even a GG, just self-destruct. So that is game one. Game one, not game two. That's... We still have another game. This, this is the best of three. So Daniil can come back from this. He does have a chance to get back from this. He just needs to, well, come back from this. That's all he needs to do is just win the next game, and then he will be... Well, I'll we'll figure out the map first, but if he wins the next game, that will end up being a best of three. That'll be a third, well, third game, rather. And then we'll see who wins. But at this point, Goda is up 1-0. If he wins one more game, that is going to be Goda winning. And if Daniil wins one more game, then we are on to game three. Just need to decide a map first. And in the meantime, I will just go silent. So stay tuned. Welcome back, not a fan. Sorry about the delay. We were waiting on Gata, and he's back. So we can now start game two of Gata versus Daniil Kalina. We're gonna be on Valis Madonatus. Just review so far. This is the winners finals. I mean the grand finals. The winners finals was Pepe versus Gota, which Pepe ended up not showing for the losers bracket finals, which he was in, and thus Daniil Kalina moved straight into the finals and the grand finals. And now we're on to game two. Game one was on AstroTurf, which was a really cool looking map, but Gota figured out how to play it better than Daniil did, and hadn't been played yet in the tournament. It was kind of cool, though. It wasn't even in the tournament. Just players agreed to it. Right in vote at the end. But now we're on Valus Madonatus, which is a map we saw earlier today already. And both players starting in the north. Not at all surprising, because the north has a lot of powerful economy. Daniil once again going for arm. Gota going for core. And... Same colors as before as well, since that's actually an important thing now. Both players are the same with their early economy. Nothing too special. But... It was... Well, it's kind of interesting there. God actually setting up his power economy a bit earlier than his metal economy. At this point, I don't even know if it matters that much. To be honest. I mean, it kind of matters because you want to make sure you're not really stalling on either. And for metal strategies, you can kind of easily stall in power if you're not careful, but... Daniil's probably going to build... There we go, there's the power plant, so that's not going to be a problem. As soon as this game just... Yeah, it's on here. And... Let's see, Goda is... Well, setting up more metal, so he's shifted back to metal, he's pretty confident about his energy economy. And Daniil is also confident about his energy economy. Both players... Actually, Gota is slightly ahead in the economy. 10.1 here. Daniil is at 8.6 or so. And getting a K-Bot lab. Well, Gota has not quite built a lab yet. He is just building more and more metal extractors. Guess once he's confident with that... There we go. There's the vehicle lab right on the ridge. Both players on the ridge. Very good place to have their opening labs. Easier than having to climb up the ridge. Just build units on the ridge. Get the range advantage right away. And also makes it harder for your opponent to contain you. If you're not careful, your opponent could go up this ridge and contain you in here. Just with hammers or thuds or, well, in case of vehicles, it'd be different. But I imagine anything from there, too, would basically contain you on that ridge. And be very difficult to get up it. I actually was able to do that to great success yesterday. But regardless, Constructor being built up first. Interesting choice. So starting with Constructor and then moving straight to Rocco's. Guessing that Goda is going to go for vehicles, I guess. I mean, he's right. That's certainly the thing to go for. Rocco's are definitely the right choice. It's just a little bit surprising that he actually... I mean, he didn't scout that out, by the way. That's the thing to point out. That was not scouted out. That was entirely guessed. And it was a good guess. The problem was, because of that guess, he didn't seem quite... I mean, he's going to still lose his constructor, I think. Depends on how quickly it takes this Jeffy get... No, that weasel has no problem getting up the hill. It should be able to take out the metal extractor. Should be able to maybe take out the constructor. The Rocco's are really what's going to matter in this regard. And... I think it's too fast to get hit. He's going to be able to just dodge that no problem. Yep. Complete perfect dodge. And at the same time, some instigators coming along the south, which are your standard light tank. Raiders as well. We saw a lot of those in an earlier game. Kind of the Ravager equivalent. 
Go to very quickly going for that sort of thing. Go to 16.2 metal to Daniil's 11.6. Both players about even in energy. Go to slightly ahead in energy, but roughly the same. And Melee Stretcher in here. More Melee Stretcher queued up. That's good. Good to see he has him queued up. Also, good to see he has a queued up on the eastern side here. Though it looks like Gota is... He wants to harass that out. Wants to make absolutely sure there's nothing here as well. I mean, he might be... I think he's probably aware that this is set up, but he might be suspecting that the tower might have started here or that constructors were sent straight south. And he's not entirely right. They weren't sent straight south because they started up in the north side. So, Daniil really wants to take that north side very quickly, very aggressively. Let's see if he actually managed to do that, though. He has a bunch of Rockos moving in. This Raider is in a good position for the Rockos to deal with it, but... Oh, what am I saying? Other way around. Raider's in a good position to deal with the Rockos. The Rockos have to rock, walk up this hill. They're very slow already. And they cannot... They can't get it in range. They're, the hill is in the way. That's the problem. The hill is actually blocking the Rockos' shots. Now the Rockos are finally up the hill. And now they're okay. Now they're gonna have a chance. But once again, this Weasel... Just can't be hit. I mean, first no peewees have been, like, I'm surprised not, like, five peewees aren't being built just to deal with that one weasel. Or maybe not five peewees, because that wouldn't be worth it. Like, yeah, that wouldn't be worth it. Like, one or two peewees. Just to deal with any weasels that come in. And then levelers should be able to finish off the rockers. Levelers counter rockers effectively, as was mentioned earlier. Hammers counter them, but not quite sure if he's aware of these. Now, Daniil does have radar from that marquee. That's about it, but he does have radar along the north side, at least, somewhat. Should get that up in a hill, though. Just a decreased radar shadow. And he's doing exactly that. Sort of. Mostly doing that. He is at least getting the center of the map visible. On the other hand, Goda has radar throughout the center. He has radar on this hill. That gives him view of everything. Which is very nice for him. However, Daniil not doing too bad. He's still keeping up someone in economy. He's not. He's still behind. He's always been behind. Goda's just really good at keeping ahead in economy, but Daniil's not doing too bad at at least staying roughly pace. He's not getting half behind or anything like that. However, these levelers up in the top, the Rockos cannot really deal with them. I mean, no, they just can't. Especially with that range advantage from the height. That is not going to work out. One of the Rockos... The Rockos are able to deal some damage, but it's not enough. And these levelers can just tear apart everything here. Hammers are the only choice. And they have started being built. The hammers have started to be built. And they are actually getting rid of this weasel without too much issue. At least scaring it off. Nothing else. However, that constructor. Where is that constructor? I think it's... No, it looks like it's okay. The constructor is still around. Where'd it go? Oh, right. It was going down to the south, which I think is... Yeah. Where is that constructor? Ah! Show me where the constructor is, for goodness sakes. Okay, there it is. Because that's important. Figure out where it's expanding to. As instigators are coming from the south, so God is once again harassing. And at this point, the economy is actually fairly even. With that harassment, the economy has someone evened out a bit. So that's definitely good for Daniil. Though now Daniil is getting harassed out. So, yeah. He's at 20 metal income. God is at 23. God is not actually building anything here. Not building any more power plants. It looks like he's pretty secure there. Does he have any constructors? He does have one construction vehicle. Although it looked like there were other... No, that's an informer. That's just radar. So both players have mobile radar. Goda's radar is... Like I said, radar coverage is excellent right now. On the other hand... Actually, wait a sec. Is that what they do? That can't be what they do. No, it's, it is. That is what they, exactly what they do. I was right in the first place. Raiders are up, though, and levelers as well. However, like I said before, hammers do get rid of levelers pretty well. There is a shooter, a sniper getting in the way, but I don't think it's going to do too much. We'll see if it does, though, but I kind of doubt it. However, no, the shooters are being built pretty regularly, and more hammers coming in here. The Rock is going to try to deal with this, and the Raider, that will be taken out by the Rock pretty effectively. But the Rockos do not have the range. Even with height, they do not have range. Now, the hammers have a decent range, thanks to the height, but not the Rockos. That is a big thing to bear in mind, and Goda, he does have this area pinned. He can actually take out more of this. The, I mean, the main tower here can't actually hit the instigator quite yet. Okay, now it's starting to shoot the instigator. He knows where it is. He knows how... Well, where it's shooting. And he knows probably that he can deal with this metal extractor without too much issue. In the center of the map, not much is going on yet. There is some posturing, some movement towards the very center from the north center. 
by Daniil, but got able to deal with yet another metal extractor. That is one more that didn't have to lose. This metal extractor here is going to be probably too risky for the instigators to go for. Just pin this down. Just prevent any expansion from coming out. Keep the contain going. And the vehicle plant being built up to try to break this contain. Getting some stumpies, which should be able to get rid of the instigators without too much issue. And at the same time, great deal of the hammers and rockos moving south. Now, that does mean the north is basically open. I should point out, the shooter is in the way, but its reload time is very long. Its damage is not terrible. 270 damage, 650 range, but it's not great either. And rockers and hammers coming down the hill. This is going to be a little bit risky because the vehicles do have the range advantage. The rock is able to get rid of... Oh, not quite able to get rid of one of these raiders. Almost, but not quite. Trying to get up in the second hill here, but the levelers are able to take all those infantry out just from that range alone. In the center of the map, no such challenge. Both players able to expand pretty much unchallenged at the center of the map and keep their economy not quite even. Daniil still at 20... God at 29, so God is still able to... He's expanded to the north. He's actually successfully taken the whole north base set, which is why he's so ahead once again. This is what happened in the last game, too. The entire game, Daniil was 20 and God was at 30. No matter what rating they did, it just always worked out that way. God just always had the territory control to deal with that. And a few more mechs have been built. These stumpies are being set up to break the instigator contain. One of them has broken an instigator, and the other one needs to be destroyed as well. And I think that... Is Daniil aware of this? Yes, he's aware of that, that instigator... He's also aware that he's losing most of his army to the north, and that's a bunch of reclaim for Gota right there. Not that there's any workers in the area to actually take it, but they could, pretty much at this point. However, at the same time, Daniil is actually raiding to the met. He's raiding the center. That's open. That's a good shot too. And Daniil, he does have enough radar coverage of the center to know he can do this. Looks like that Marky on that Marky on the hill is exactly what's giving him that. Now he's from here going to actually be able to deal with decent blow. In fact, he's got a slight economic advantage at this point. For metal, not energy. Energy is his bond like he needs more power plants. And he's aware of that. Building more wind generators might be useful. Wind generators are a bit less predictable than solar plants, but it might just work. However, this factory is basically dead. There aren't very many units in the way to deal with it, and the levelers and raiders are just going to tear it apart. At the same time, though, this center attack should deal with it pretty well. We shall see, though. This is going to be... I mean, Daniil needs to win this in order to keep in the game. The thing is, this is game two. Go to one game one. If Daniil wins this, this is going to be on to game three. Now, Goda still has... No, an economic disadvantage. This is... Oh, well, no. Goda has an economic advantage. 31 medal to 20. There is a chance with some constructors to deal with this, to get this entire section of metal, get the east side of the map and stabilize. The north side has been dropped, though, and Daniil... He knows it. And he's raiding as best as he can, trying to just minimize the damage that's going to be dealt by that. And the K-Bot Lab is up on the ridge as well for Goda. He does have this ridge pretty well protected. And at the same time, these hammers and rockers, they could... They are moving in. I mean, he's definitely going for this. He's going for probably the least developed part so far, though. This center section here would be more developed, but it's also better defended. So I can see why he's going further south first. And able to get rid of... Oh, not quite able to get rid of the, metal, the defense cert. He should do, though. And he is doing that. He's doing exactly that, getting rid of that, making sure that the Necro is not actually building anything at this point. I'm a bit surprised he isn't trying to go up this ridge, take out this... Oh, no. That was what I say. A bit surprised he isn't going to take out this metal extractor up the ridge, but he is. He has a Stumpy going down to do exactly that, getting rid of the metal extractor, and will get rid of the Necro, too. So that's very effective. Still, he's behind. He is half... He has half the economy of Goda right now, because Goda's moved in the center, dealt with the economy. The vehicles are in the way to try to stop it, but... It's not going to be enough. These, just these AKs on their own. They're so hard to hit, so it's just... For these Stumpies, it's just impossible for them to hit the AKs. I mean, they get lucky from time to time, but it's very difficult. If the AKs are moving at all, it's almost impossible. And at this point, Vash is coming in. I totally missed that air factory. There is an air factory that's been built. Double checking. No, just Goda. Goda's the only one with that air factory. He has 30 metal right now. He actually still needs to spend more of it. And Daniil at... 17 metal. He's starting to build up a bit, and he is doing a pretty good job here. This is where Retreat Micro does come in handy, especially against a bunch of AKs like this. But even then, it's not accurate enough. The AKs are able to just swarm in. They're fast enough. They can get in. They can deal with all these Hammers and Rockos, and the Hammers and Rockos don't really have enough of a range advantage to deal with them, and certainly don't have the accuracy to deal with them. 
So go to able to get through there and not have to worry about it at all. And that's all for the bots. There are no more bots coming up for Daniil. He does have a radar tower being built up, but he hasn't actually had radar up for a while. He's been purely on line of sight. He's been... That... Mark, he died some time ago. He's t trying to retake the north and valiant effort on him for doing so, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Attacking this one from the front, too. That's about, okay, now he's attacking from the back. That's good. You get double damage as a result, effectively. But he... Okay, gets rid of one of... One of the raiders, trying to get rid of others. I noticed the armor, the way the armor is set up. You have 72% in the front and 150% in the back. So it's basically double damage, and that's roughly true for most units. It's double damage if you hit from the back than from the front, relatively speaking. And these, well, these raiders doing a very nice job just dealing with all this. Unfortunately, they did expose their backs, which meant they weren't hit harder. I think that might have been a top hit. Top hits also deal less damage. Or, sorry, also deal much more damage. They deal relatively double damage. And that's another raider going down. Not a bad raid, though. I mean, admittedly, not a bad use of the raiders. Raiders and levelers on the top as well, just to help deal with this. Just to help keep the contain going. So now, now, this is what I was talking about with contains on this map. This north ridge, this is what I mean. Godet has nicely pinned down Daniil. And now Daniil, he has been expanding to the... That's, this is what he needs to do. He's expanding to the east side. Expanding along this, and actually the south has only started to be taken by Gota. He took it a bit earlier, but he's only really getting to the center now. And this is good. I mean, Daniil needs to do this and needs to pull this into something else. He's getting a K-Bot lab. Not a bad idea. The air factory might be problematic, though. That is the one thing. He doesn't have any real way of dealing with air. And he doesn't have any real way of dealing with this hill, either. I'm going to try to go up this ramp here, but even then, it's not going to help. He's not even going to go for it. He's just accepting the contain. It looks like he's trying to expand more to the south. And no, he's not even accepting anything. He is throwing in the towel. That is game. That is match. That is the tournament. Daniil has lost. Gota has won. To no one's surprised. But hey, Daniil got second place, which was slightly surprising. And that is it. That is game. That is the tournament. So if you enjoyed watching that, now I can actually say that, and it makes sense. Thank you all for watching. And... I hope you enjoyed this. It's a bit of a change of pace because, of course, never actually done Nauta before. But I hope you enjoyed that. It was by request by Polar Gaming. So thank you, Polar Gaming, for hosting. And thank you for asking me to cast as well because that was that was very kind of you. I appreciate that. It was very, very flattering. So anyway, thank you again for all watching and have a good night, everybody. There we go.